Thank you, John. Thank you, Father Gruner, for your gracious invitation today. I'm going to speak to you today about the errors of Freemasonry and the connection between Freemasonry, Our Lady, and the message of Fatima. As we know, Masonry is an enemy of the Church, and as we'll learn today, Our Lady has warned us for many centuries that Freemasonry would penetrate the Church, would corrupt the hierarchy, and lead souls to damnation. In this presentation, I'm going to first talk about some very important historical points that connect Masonry with Our Lady. I'm then going to talk about Masonic ritual and finally conclude with the effect that Freemasonry has had on the Catholic Church. So why am I qualified to talk about this? Well, as John has indicated, although I am a cradle Catholic, a lifelong Catholic, I also became a Freemason. Out of law school, I was solicited to join Freemasonry by many Catholic men, and that's very common in America. It was presented to me as simply a social club, an organization that would help me develop business contacts. And I was under the impression that American Freemasonry differed from European Freemasonry, and that's how it was explained to me. In fact, seeking some counsel from parish priests, they said the same thing. And so I didn't feel the need to investigate it any further, and in this period in my life, uh, I became a Master Mason, a 32nd degree Mason, a member of the Shriners. I was a member of two Masonic lodges. I served as principal officer in one of those lodges. I was about to be elected Worshipful Master before I left. And I received a very rare credential called the Proficiency Card, which authorized me to instruct other Masons in Masonic ritual. It literally requires a man to have committed to memory all of the rituals of Blue Lodge Freemasonry all of the positions, and that's what I could do. So I know what Freemasonry teaches because I taught it myself. As I said, in America, Masonry is not deemed to be harmful. It seems to be simply a social organization. And I've often asked myself, why is that? Why is it perceived differently in Europe? And the reason is America was never a Catholic country to begin with. America was founded by Freemasons. And the ideology of Freemasonry is enshrined in the U.S. Constitution. For example, the Establishment Clause, where the government won't respect any religion. That's a denial of the social kingship of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Free Exercise Clause, which gives man a right to practice any religion. Again, contrary to the Catholic faith. And so America lives the religion of Freemasonry. That's why Masonry is not deemed to be a threat. And it was, in fact, United States Supreme Court justices who created the doctrine of separation of church and state in the United States. Under Presidents Roosevelt, Truman, and Eisenhower, all of whom were Freemasons, they appointed, in collectively, 12 Supreme Court justices, all of whom were Masons. And from 1941 to 1971, Masons dominated the Supreme Court. And through those judicial decisions created the Masonic doctrine of separation of church and state. Now Catholics, of course, should know better because there have been uh, very infrequent con uh, condemnations of some other errors, but not as many as Freemasonry. In my research, I've discovered 12 popes issuing no less than 23 separate condemnations on Freemasonry. And these teachings are considered part of the ordinary and universal magisterium of the church. They're binding on the souls of all Catholics. The Church has always been very clear about the Church's position on Masonry. Now, I'm going to turn to Fatima and try to give you a perspective of how Fatima and Masonry are connected. We know about the three secrets or the three parts of the secret. First, we have a vision of hell. Secondly, Our Lady revealed of the, warned of the errors of Russia and the need to consecrate Russia to her Immaculate Heart. And third, there's the vision of the bishop dressed in white. So without any other information, what we see there is a warning of errors, of people going to hell, and somehow the church being involved, because the pope is involved in the third part. Then we have Sister Lucia's fourth memoir, where she says, in Portugal, the dogma of the faith will always be preserved, etc. Of course, implying that the dogma of the faith will not be preserved elsewhere. Why? 
because of these errors. So what we have are the errors of Russia poisoning the world and the church and leading souls to hell. So what are the errors of Russia? They're the same as the errors of Freemasonry. They're one and the same. In short, a rejection of Jesus Christ and his holy Catholic Church. A rejection of God-made man and the exaltation of man-made God. A rejection of the supernatural and an exaltation of the natural. That's why Masonry wants a religion of naturalism. We can all be brothers on the natural level, but if we reject the supernatural level, we cannot in the order of grace. We're only brothers and sisters when we're united to Christ and his mystical body through grace. And so ultimately, this is a question of God versus Satan. And that's how Sister Lucia put it. She said that Satan was in the mood for a decisive battle with Our Lady, and we must choose. Now, I mentioned that Our Lady has warned us of these errors long before Fatima, and she did so in apparitions at Quito, Ecuador, at the end of the 16th and the beginning of the 17th century. These revelations prefigure Fatima, and you're going to see why. Our Lady and Our Lord appeared to a religious named Sister Mariana de Jesus Torres, and Paul V has acknowledged, Pope Paul V has acknowledged these apparitions. They've been acknowledged by the church at large. In fact, Sister Mariana's body was exhumed in 1885, 271 years after she died, incorrupt. And in one of the apparitions in 1582, Our Lord and Our Lady appear to Sister Mariana. And Sister saw Jesus Christ suffering his passion on the cross, but coincident with our Lord's suffering, Sister Mariana also saw the church and smoke entering the church, enveloping the church. That reminds us of Paul VI's statement that the smoke of Satan has entered the church. Our Lady and our Lord gave that revelation to Sister Mariana 400 years before Paul VI confirmed that it happened. And an angel of God appeared and said that, God was going to give Sister Mariana a secret, using the same terminology at Fatima. And the secret that was communicated by Our Lady was that God the Father was going to punish the criminal world for its sins, and it was going to suffer these punishments in the 20th century. Sister Mariana also saw three swords above Our Lord's head, and they represented the sins for which humanity was going to be punished. Heresy, impiety, and impurity. Heresy, of course, reflects the doctrine of the church. Impiety deals with the expression of the doctrine. And impurity deals with the morality that follows the doctrine. And Our Lady asked Mariana, just like she asked Lucia, whether she was willing to sacrifice for the people of this time. And she said she was. And similar to Fatima, Our Lady continued to appear to Sister Mariana. For example, in one of these apparitions, she showed Sister Mariana Satan, the serpent engulfed in hellfire while she was in her cell, similar to the vision of hell that the three seers had. She also showed Sister Mariana the infant Jesus, just like the infant Jesus appeared at Fatima with St. Joseph. She identified herself as Our Lady of Good Success, and she said that humanity must do penance in order to appease the wrath of God or they will be punished for their sins. The same message of Fatima. In another apparition, Saint Gabriel appeared with a chalice with Our Lord's blood in it in a ciborium of hosts, very similar to the Angel of Portugal. All of these prefigured Fatima, and the message is the same. In 1599, Our Lady told Sister Mariana that in 200 years, Freemasonry would take control of the Ecuadorian government and persecute the church. And she predicted that a future president, Catholic president, would be assassinated. This happened. Garcia Moreno, Catholic president, was martyred in 1875, two years after he consecrated Ecuador to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And his heart is incorrupt. And then in 1610, Our Lady gave an astonishing statement. She said, Satan would reign almost exclusively through Freemasonry. 
Remember, we're talking about the 20th century. Remember, we're talking about the smoke of Satan, the smoke of Freemasonry entering into the church. The wild boar will enter into the vineyard, corrupt the souls, both lay and consecrated, and lead them to damnation. In this apparition, Our Lady also warned that there would be a corruption of customs. The church calls them immemorial or ecclesiastical customs. The way we dress, the necessity for women to cover their heads in church while they pray, receiving communion, kneeling on the tongue, and so forth. She said in the 20th century there would be a profanation of the Eucharist. She said that hosts would be stolen and trampled underfoot, which was nearly impossible until the abuse of communion in the hand was introduced in the 20th century. She said the sacraments of baptism, confession, confirmation, and extreme unction would fall into disuse. They would decline. She said that matrimony would be profaned. She said that the devil will attack priests, will corrupt them, will scandalize the faithful, and lead souls to hell. In short, Our Lady predicted that in the 20th century, the church would be attacked by Freemasonry, and it would cause a crisis in the faith. And in light of Fatima, this means that the errors of Russia are the errors of Freemasonry, a naturalism which the popes teach us leads to a practical atheism. Now Our Lady's warnings at Quito were confirmed by Pope Gregory XVI in the 19th century when he discovered a document that is often known as the permanent instruction of the Alta Vendita, written by a version of Freemasonry called the Carbonari. And this was a blueprint for subverting the Catholic Church by infiltrating it with liberal ideas. In effect, to have a Masonic revolution in the church. The Masons wanted to get into the seminaries, into the monasteries, even into the schools, and they've always had a fanatical uh, desire to corrupt children and produce a pope that the document says would be according to our needs, a pope that would be sympathetic to humanitarian principles, to liberty, equality, fraternity, human dignity, all at the expense of truth. Blessed Pius IX and Leo XIII ordered that the Alta Vendita be published. And when Blessed Pius IX wrote his syllabus of errors condemning religious liberty and indifferentism, and Pope Leo XIII wrote Humanum Genus, they certainly had the Alta Vendita in mind. So what Our Lady at Quito in the 16th century predicted was formally conceived by Freemasonry in the 19th century to affect the church in the 20th century. Now, back to Fatima. Why Portugal? Why did Our Lady come there? Well, like Ecuador, like Mexico, like Spain, there was a Masonic revolution in Portugal. In 1910, the Masons killed the king, King Carlos. They set up a provisional government by force of arms, and they immediately began to attack the church. They suppressed religious orders, they banished clergy, they stole church property, they outlawed the oaths that were required to be sworn in court, even the oaths that children had to swear to defend the Immaculate Conception. They legalized divorce, they called marriage a civil contract only, they required work on religious holidays. In fact, the Masonic Square encompasses even appeared on Portuguese currency. And the leader of Freemasonry, one Magalhas Lima, declared that masonry would destroy the faith in Portugal. And it was under these conditions that Our Lady came to Portugal. In fact, Our Lady's statement that in Portugal the dogma will always be preserved is a response, a direct response, to the declaration of Portuguese Freemasonry that they would destroy the faith. You see the strong connection between Fatima and Freemasonry. We all know what happened after Our Lady appeared. Arturo Santos, the mayor, the Masonic mayor, fought against the movement of Fatima. He himself was a Mason. He founded his own Masonic lodge in Fatima, and we know what he did to the three seers. He kidnapped the children, he imprisoned them, he threatened to kill them. There was a local lodge at Santarem which mocked the visions of Freemasonry. They had Masonic processions through Fatima, chanting blasphemous litanies to Our Lady. They stole religious articles. Their hatred was so fanatical against Fatima that in March 6, 1921, they bombed the chapel at the Cova. But something happened. 
In 1931, the bishops decided to consecrate Portugal to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, hence affecting a counter-revolution. President Bernardino Macado, who was a Masonic president, fell from power. And Antonio Salazar rose to power in 1935. He banned Freemasonry. And just as Masonry was defeated in Portugal through the act of consecration, so the same will happen once the Pope consecrates Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. <coughs> Fatima, however, is still a target of Freemasonry. In 2003, there was a pan-religious gathering at the Paul VI Center adjacent to the site of Fatima where pagans came in and talked about how their worship and their, their sanctuaries were important. And if you read the accounts of this pan-religious gathering, the, the Fatima revelations were never mentioned. An ecumenism of non-conversion was preached and the church's infallible teaching Extra ecclesium nulla salus est, no salvation outside the church, was effectively denounced. In other words, they preached Freemasonry at Fatima. This is more evidence of Our Lady's warnings of a Masonic movement toward a one world religion. Now, let's talk about Russia. Why Russia? Why is Russia the object of the consecration? Well, we've already briefly explained her errors, but at this time when Our Lady appeared, there was also a Masonic revolution in Russia, affected by lodges at St. Petersburg. Again, this happened in 1917, the very year Our Lady appeared, foretelling that she would ask for the consecration of Russia. And then in 1929, she came to say that the time has come for the consecration. Why then? Why in 1929? Well, many point out that Stalin at that time had made the Russian Orthodox sect an arm of the atheistic state in order to better influence their brand of ecumenism, which in their view is to put all religions on the same level, thereby subverting the true religion of Jesus Christ. And the Russian Orthodox sect joined the World Council of Churches, and they do hold leadership positions in the WCC. This is a Masonic organization. This is a syncretist organization that is seeking the unification of religions. The World Council of Churches is even currently pressuring Catholic bishops to have ecumenical celebrations of the Mass with non-Catholics. Again, the error of indifferentism, which leads to a practical atheism. So God is using Russia as an instrument of chastisement, materially, through the violence and the butchering of millions under the evil leaders of Russia, but also spiritually, by allowing her errors to spread throughout the world. And it was because of the Russian Orthodox presence at the Ecumenical Council, the Second Ecumenical Council, that John the 23rd and Paul the 6th did not condemn communism. Many also say that it's for fear of not offending the Russian Orthodox that the popes have yet to consecrate Russia. Although I think the problem is even deeper than that. I think it's because of the crisis of faith in the church. I think the secret may indicate that there are going to be a string of popes who simply don't believe in the message of Fatima. This goes beyond fear of human respect. And so the point is, on a spiritual level, Russia continues to carry out the Masonic plan of the Alta Vendita for a one-world religion where man is exalted and God is denied. And this is why Russia must be consecrated. You know, St. Paul says in the last times that the Antichrist will put an idol in the temple of God. And one must wonder whether an ecumenical celebration of the Mass where non-Catholics say the words of consecration will give rise to this idolatry since no transubstantiation is going to be affected. Could this be the abomination of desolation that was prophesied by Daniel and our Lord? We saw ecumenists paving the way for such ecumenical celebrations of false religions at the Fatima Shrine. In summary, the third secret may contain information regarding the Masonic origin of the apostasy in the church. And if Masons were controlling the church, they would be bound to suppress the third secret. Why? Because it would alert the faithful to the crisis that they caused and the means by which they caused it. It would point the finger directly at them. And since their goal is the complete destruction of the Catholic Church, they won't be allowed the evil forces of Masonry are pressing for it to remain suppressed. 
Of course, since we know that the church can never be destroyed based on our Lord's promises, this will never happen. The secret will be revealed and the consecration will be effected. So the point here is that masonry is rele relevant to Fatima and it may be the very object of Our Lady's warnings in the third secret. <clears throat> 